Male genital piercings, hardest to heal to easiest to heal. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 81. So stick around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in lovely Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you at a level of expertise that comes with being in the industry for well over 26 years and piercing the bodies. Before we get too far into this, I want to explain something very, very quickly, kind of give you a disclaimer. If you are sensitive to issues relating to male genitalia, male anatomy, and etc., this is the video for you. Uh, the purpose of this video is those that are considering getting these piercings done or know somebody or have a partner that's considering getting this done. It's solely for education. If it in your part of the world, it is not considered appropriate at your age, I would suggest you also not watch. And if you're looking for something exciting and tenulating, this is not the video that's going to do that. You're going to be disappointed. If uh, you'd like to watch some other videos on body piercing, there are plenty of them on this channel. We have well over 400 of them relating to body piercing and tattooing. I suggest you go watch something else. For those that are still with us, what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the male genitals, the most common piercings uh, from the hardest to heal to the easiest to heal. Uh, basically, this is my own experience, uh, either personally or what I've heard from clients or what I've learned through research. Uh, there are three piercings, three or four piercings on here. I think it's just three that I don't personally do. And the reason why I don't do them is because I wasn't trained to do them. Uh, the person that I apprenticed under did not do them. And I don't feel comfortable doing piercings uh, as, of, of this type, especially on someone without supervision in, uh, by somebody that has a lot of experience doing them. So, I've, and to be honest with you, I haven't had that many requests over the year, over the years, and most people end up getting something else instead. So it, it just never really became a pressing matter not to do these. So let's get into the list. Uh, number one is going to be pubic piercings. Pubic piercings are located at the uh, where the shaft uh, enters into the body on the top side, um, in the pubic area. Uh, these are service to service piercings for the most part. Some people have kind of a little bit of loose tissue in there that the jewelry can fit in. Uh, th the reason why this is number one is they are just so prone to reject yeah, rejection. Uh, they are a service to service piercing. Uh, they, I've experimented over the years doing this on various different clients with rings and curved barbells and surface barbells, and it just comes down to tolerance. If your body's going to put up with it, It'll let it heal. If they won't let you, if your body's like, no, <laughs> no, then it's going to reject. Number two, and I put kind of, I would put number two, number three, um, kind of in the same category. Uh, these are two piercings I don't do, and that's af amplings and affidelias. Amplings are done straight through the uh, head of the penis. Affidelias are done vertically through, and kind of the bottom is in, in, through the PA. The reason I've already given for why I don't do them. Now, the reason why I listed these so high on the list is because they're very long piercings, meaning that it's going to take your body a lot longer to grow enough tissue to seal off that piercing. Whenever we have a piercing that takes a lot longer to heal, it's going to be a little bit more prone to issues. For example, a tongue piercing is a very quick heal, not very problematic. Most people can heal it out with little or no issues. It has this old, you know, it has this, its own baggage with wrists and et cetera, but it heals very quickly. So there's a low, 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 low risk of infection or other problems. A piercing, like let's say the nipples, where it's a much longer piercing, there's a lot more issues involved. There's a lot more consistency with our possibility of problems or issues to arise during the healing process, just basically because that wound is open longer. 
with these two beer sinks, that is definitely the case. Uh, so I would rate them two and three, kind of on an, they're basically two, but you know, they're kind of even. Number four, the reverse PA, uh, or reverse Prince Albert. This piercing goes through the uh, urethra um, upward, unlike a normal PA, PA that goes downward, and then uh, out through the top. Once again, length of the piercing, longer healing period, more prone to issues. Also, I've had clients that have gotten this done that have had issues because it seems to get a lot more movement and a lot more contact than other genital piercings so during sexual intercourse. So that's why it's number four on the list. Number five, didoids. Didoids are located through the glands, usually on both sides, um, kind of where that ridge is if you're cut um, or circumcised you'll notice that it'll kind of come down and have kind of a ridge on the bottom there, pierce straight through that. Usually with a curved barbell, um, I don't suggest straight ones. They tend to migrate a great deal faster. Um, some people do them with rings, but yeah, your best option is usually a curved barbell. The reason why these are so high on the list is because they are prone to rejection and migration. Um, I have had good success with it over the years with people that have the right anatomy. If you don't have the right anatomy, this piercing is probably going to reject. If you're doing a pair, then it's probably going to reject on one side and stay fine on the other side or what have you. So it's one of those piercings that you really have to have the anatomy for, but it can be a difficult heal for that reason because they do reject sometimes, not always, sometimes. Number six. Gish piercings. Gish piercings are located at the base of the scrotum, um, of course, above the, uh, kind of between the, the scrotum and the anus, done in that, what we like to refer to as the sweet spot. It's a tendency, uh, most males have kind of a sensitive spot right there. Uh, it's done basically through there with a ring. Uh, the reason why I listed these higher is because of the amount of contact that particular piercing does get with clothing, bedding, or seats, horseback riding, bicycle saddles, etc., and the fact that it is so close to your anus. So a lot of precaution has to be taken to make sure that you do not contaminate it when you wipe. Number seven, scrotums or hoftas. Uh, scrotums are done pretty much anywhere on the scrotum. Uh, they're done through that outer sac, not the inner sac. There's two sacs there. So one that holds the testicles, um, and then there's an outer one. The outer one is what we pierce through, and what it does is it expands and contracts to control the temperature of your, of your sperm. Keeps them healthy. These are usually done with rings. They can be done with curved barbells. They are kind of a borderline surface to surface piercing. Uh, the reason why I put them so high on the list is they tend to take a little while to heal and they tend to come in contact with clothing a lot. Uh, they're definitely one of those piercings depending on where they're placed where they can get a lot of tugging and catching and et cetera. So really take that into consideration if you're getting this done, what that location and how much contact it's gonna be. And talk to your piercer about it. Lorem, basically it is a frenum slash scrotum piercing. Uh, it's located at the base of the penis on the underside. Some people have kind of a almost web-like triangle there that hangs off of it. It's usually done through there. The reason why this I would list this higher or more prone to problems than these than frenums and other pro, uh, other piercings in the area is because they tend to be at a collection point. Uh, they're they're kind of where the condom ends. They they tend to get knocked around a little bit more. They can just kind of be an uncomfortable piercing sometimes uh, during kind of have a rough heel. Uh, usually they heal out pretty well, but they do have that possibility. Number nine, the Prince Albert, probably the most popular, most common piercing, male genital piercing on the planet. Uh, for those who don't know, it's, uh, there's kind of a triangle on the underside of your penis. It's done through there, out the front uh, of your urethra, usually done with a ring or a curved barbell. These are very quick heals. Uh, the amount of tissue that we're actually going through is probably at the thickest, maybe an eighth of an inch. It's very quick. They, they heal fairly quickly. The drawback to them is the adaption to getting used to having something inside urethra and the effect it has on urinating. 
And that brings to number 10. And this one's very anatomy specific, uh, depending on where you live and what your parents decided to do when you were a child. And that's foreskin piercings, also known as kinos. Foreskin piercings are done basically through the foreskin, usually done with rings or barbells, um, basically around the tip. They can be done kind of like a crown, so to speak. Uh, once the foreskin contracts, they stick outward. Uh, that reason, they can be a little tricky. and The jewelry has to be right dead on size-wise. And the placement has to be dead set to make sure that there is, when, when things get larger, there isn't tightness or issues um, with strain on the piercing. But for that, other than that, it's usually a very thin piece of tissue. They're fairly quick healers and they look great once they heal. And that brings us to number 11, the freedom piercing. Freedom piercing is done pretty much anywhere on the shaft, um, done on the loose tissue. If you pull um, on it, you'll notice this, there's kind of a looser outer tissue. Done through that. Uh, traditionally on the underside of the penis, but they can be done on the sides. They can be done on the top, uh, basically anywhere along there. Uh, very quick heal, not very pragmatic, tends to be more away from things, doesn't get knocked around, doesn't affect uh, urinating like the Prince Albert does. So I would rate that as one of the easiest male genital piercings to heal, if not the easiest. Now let's move on to male groupings. Uh, probably the most popular or most common would be Jacob's Ladders. Jacob's Ladders are any frenum that's, or any grouping of frenums, I generally say three or more, that are done in a horizontal manner that kind of match. So they're kind of like a ladder. They can be done from the very top, just below the uh, glands, all the way down to a lorem or right at the base of the penis. Uh, usually with these, they're pretty easy to heal out. Um, I generally suggest not doing more, not doing more than three at a time. They tend to, once you get to that fourth one, either your your pain level has just dropped what you'll tolerate, or there's so much swelling going on that the piercing is not going to end up being straight. It's going to end up a little bit off here or there. So it's best to just do three, heal it out, then do the second side. Okay, uh, this is supposed to be the first grouping, but I skipped it. Magic Cross. Uh, Magic Cross is an amplic in an affidelia uh, in one, one piercing. So they're basically all that's visible outside the body is four balls. One of the two, of the, one on the top, one on the bottom, and one on each side. And that is a Magic Cross. King's Crown. Now this one has kind of a, it can be one of two things. It can either be a multi-grouping of didoids or um, uh, a multi-grouping of uh, foreskin piercings. Uh, basically, it kind of is like a crown. Like if you ever notice how a crown has those points that kind of stick up, it kind of gives that visual look around the, the glands. The last one would be a scrotum ladder. Basically, these are done basically the same way as for Jacob's ladder, except they're done uh, with the scrotum. Uh, usually in combination of a Jacob's ladder and then a lorem and then a scrotum ladder and then a gish. Which means you end up having a lot of jewelry down there. Very weighty. Lastly, I'm going to talk about a couple of advanced piercings or techniques that go on in the area that I know if I don't mention them, someone's going to ask. The first one would be dolphins or um, deep Prince Alberts. Uh, I know there's another dolphin piercing. This dolphin is actually older than the other dolphin. Basically what it is, is where a piercing or a Prince Albert is normally located at, that exit point, and then it goes out the urethra. If you take that jewelry and then twist it and take uh, your the normal piercing where it's at and then pierce further down on the shaft so that it is basically deeper into the urethra, and not out the front of the urethra. This is a very advanced piercing to get done. I really suggest that if you're thinking about it, you see uh, your piercer, you talk about it at length, you talk to people that have gotten it done by that person, because this one can cause some issues if it is not done correctly. So definitely, please, 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 please do your research. 
Now, this one is a real extreme one, and I don't even, I only know of maybe two cases that I've read about over the years. I've obviously never seen one in person, and that's a transcrotal piercing. This is a piercing that's actually done uh, behind the uh, sack, so to speak. Uh, you really, you're really asking for an extremely long healing time. You're really asking somebody that better have extremely advanced knowledge of that part of your anatomy. Um, it's really something I don't suggest getting done. It's a, uh, it's a unicorn. It's really one of those things that I really wouldn't advise at all, especially from anybody that's inexperienced or hasn't been doing this very long or doesn't have a lot of experience doing male genital piercings to begin with. And the last one, purling. Purling is uh, where, and I won't go into the long history and everything else, but purling, and it's usually something that's done in prison, uh, is where a small cut is made in the outer tissue of the scrot or the, the penis shaft, and then a pearl or metal object, ball, what have you, is inserted in there, and then the area is sealed shut. So it's kind of like an implant. I don't do that. Um, in really, if you're looking for somebody that does this, look into somebody that does a lot of these subdermal implants and et cetera. They're gonna have a lot more knowledge and a lot better access to the proper tools, technique, and the proper materials that you're not gonna put something in your body that's going to reject or cause health issues down the road. That's it. That's all I have to say about male genital piercings easiest or hardest, easiest to heal. Hope you found this edifying. Hope you found this entertaining. Hope you found this educational. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something after you subscribe. If you haven't already, check out our bird store. Plenty of great stuff there. Uh, link is in the description. There's also one of those bars. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without any issues. In, if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody.